Hey there, I'm Kate. I'm here at Shine Yoga Center in Hyde Park, Cincinnati. Today's practice is going to be a fairly short one with the intention of um, building core strength and strength through our arms. When I think of core strength, it's not probably in the traditional way that most people think of core strength. Um, ab, your abs have been come to be associated with core strength. But really, from a yoga perspective and from functional movement, which is something that I incorporate a lot into my yoga classes, it's about keeping your spine steady, keeping your spine steady in various positions in space so that it leads to overall um, well-being in your posture and in your movement. So we're going to begin standing at the front of our mat or in your space. You don't really need a special yoga mat for this practice. And just let your arms relax to your sides. Close your eyes and feel into your body. Feel your feet on the floor. Let yourself have a sense of feeling the relationship of your body parts from feet stacking upward through legs, pelvis, spine. Feel your rib cage in space, your shoulders, your arms hanging from the shoulder girdle, your collarbone and shoulder blade. Have a sense of feeling your spine up through your neck your skull and then have a sense of awareness of what's happening in the field of your mind today and into the feeling of your heart and just take a moment to breathe into whatever you're experiencing and think about really coming more fully into the present moment letting go of attachment or fear or worry or regret about anything other than what is here right now Part of our yoga practice is to learn to become more fully present without critique or judgment and to really allow ourselves to experience the truth of each moment as it passes by in that way, really embracing the moments of our lives, not getting too caught up in the times that are challenging and not overemphasizing those times where we feel our most exuberant, allowing ourselves to develop a deeper sense of contentment over time. All right, we're gonna inhale and reach our arms up overhead. Just take a nice big stretch and a good deep breath in. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Step your feet wider than your hips, just a little bit, and then have your middle three toes pointing straight forward. Sometimes when I'm teaching, I'll turn different directions just so you can see the angles of my body. You don't need to turn. Now we're gonna do a few rounds of mini squats where you're squatting and standing. And what you wanna to try to do here is to not move your spine. So remember, this is about core stability. So we're trying to keep our spine and our pelvis in the same shape when we're squatting and standing. Most people it won't probably be a very deep squat. If we start to squat, for a lot of people, either our pelvis will tilt forward like mine does or yours might tuck under. Now, we're gonna bring our hands to our lower thighs this is called a supported squat or bandhasana. And you want to send your hips back, send your butt back and stretch your spine long. Take a nice deep breath here and remind yourself of the curves of your spine. So we're going to come back up to standing to re-experience that. Close your eyes again, soften your knees. And then although we'll each have a little bit of individual differences, most of us are gonna have the same general shape in the spine where the tip of the tailbone does tuck under a little bit forward towards the pubic bones. The sacrum, the set of fused bones on your very lower back is gonna bow slightly outward. Your lower back is gonna bow slightly inward. Where your spine meets and integrates with your ribs is gonna bow kind of back a little bit. And then in the back of the neck, there should be a slight concave curve. And then of course the skull curves outward. So while we're gonna talk about getting our spine and holding our spine in neutral in different positions, it's gonna have those little serpentine curves. And as often as we can, we wanna to try to enhance them to hold them. All right, we're coming back to our supported squat. And here I want you to notice, have you rounded, which is quite common. Maybe you've overarched, less common, but still possible. And try to find those spinal curves in this position where you're true hinging at your hip. So the top of your pelvis is tilting forward. The low back has a little bit of a curve. Look straight down at the floor. 
Feel your upper back bowing slightly outward with the ribs and then a little curve in the back of your neck. Now we're going to step back into lunge position. So you'll bring your hands to the floor. If that's difficult, you could put your hands on chair, on the edge of a chair or on yoga blocks. Wiggle your right foot as far back as it feels good for you. Both of your hands are in the inside of your left front knee. Take a breath here and then bring your right knee to the floor and lift up through your chest. You should feel a pretty significant stretch in your thigh and um, groin. And again, remind yourself, you could have your hands higher. They could be on blocks or a chair. And if anything hurts, you just skip it. If it hurts to put your knee down, just keep your knee up, that's fine. We're gonna change sides. You're sliding your back, your back foot forward and stepping your front foot back. You're coming into traditional lunge. In this one, I am bringing the hands to the inside of the front knee. It just makes this pose a little bit more accessible for more people. Bring your back knee to the floor, lift up through your chest. Take a nice deep breath there. Okay, we're gonna move into what I call puppy position. So it's kind of like a half downward dog. You might know that pose from yoga. You're kneeling, your hips are over your knees. Your arms go forward and reach forward. This is an awkward pose because it's part strength and part stretch. So the strength is in your arms. You're trying to keep your arms lifting up and then you're stretching your hips up and back. Take a nice deep breath there. Now we're gonna put our forearms on the floor and hinge forward. This is called Sphinx. You can make it easier by stretching your arms more forward or more challenging having your arms closer towards you. Lift up through your chest, take a nice deep breath here. Make sure that you're not straining in any of these postures. So you just wanna do the amount that feels challenging, but that you're also still ultimately pretty comfortable. Bend your right knee, circle your ankle, wiggle your toes. Do the same on the other leg. Bend your left knee, circle your ankle, wiggle your toes. We're gonna warm up our wrists a little bit here. So you're gonna extend both legs straight. Now flip your palms upward and try to get the thumb side of your hand to press downward. And then make a fist like this. Roll your, the first set of knuckles in, then the second set of knuckles in. And you're gonna to try to keep the forearm on the floor as you're lifting your fists towards you. You should feel a good stretch right here. And then roll out your wrists and wiggle your fingers. Okay, we're gonna do our first elbow knee plank. And even if you know that you're strong enough to do this on feet, I want you to do it on your knees for an important reason, which I'll talk about when we're in it. Tuck your elbows in tight to each other and as far back in towards your chest as you can, and then lift your belly up. Let your head tuck down. Now try to dome your low back. So you're really working on these very, very low belly muscles. You're shortening your abdominal muscles. Make sure that you're still breathing. And then exhale, lower your hips back to the floor. This is Shalabhasana, one of the versions, there's many. You're gonna take your arms behind you, fingertips down, but the palm of your hand lifting up, I call the spider hands. Look at the floor. Lift your upper body a little bit. Keep the back of your neck long. Now feel the way that you're probably your lower back is crunching, is over tightening. So squeeze your belly muscles in as much as you just did in that elbow knee plank. That's called, these are called our bandhas and we use them to keep the low back long and to make sure the lower back muscles don't overwork. Good, bring your, uh, bend your elbows, place your hands flat on the floor, squeeze your elbows in and pull your shoulders back. This is a starting position for a couple of yoga poses. One is cobra, the other is chaturanga. Cobra, we're gonna curl up, but you still wanna keep your belly strong. So you're not trying to force an arch. You wanna lift in a way that you feel like you're kind of arching your back evenly. Mine is pretty high. This might be more appropriate for you. So what feels good where you feel your back muscles working but not overworking? Okay, now we're gonna try to do a push up onto the knees, not your feet yet, onto your knees where you lift your hips, your ribs, and your head at the same rate. It's harder than it sounds. And then press your hips back to child's pose. Just take a moment to pause here. If this pose is not comfortable for you, for any reason, you could do puppy instead. And you might make this puppy more restful by placing your head on the floor. All right, we are coming now to downward facing dog. I'm just gonna move my mat a little bit here. 
Okay, downward dog, come back to hands and knees, place your hands a little forward of your shoulders, tuck your toes under, spread your fingers out and grip the floor, and then lift your knees and push your hips up and back just like you did for puppy. Pause and hold here. Over time, this starts to become a pose where we neutralize, but it is quite challenging for the arms and your core when you're first learning it. So if you ever feel like it's too much, you can always come down to your knees. Okay, we're gonna walk our feet forward to our hands. Inhale, just stand all the way up tall, arms reach up overhead. Bring your hands together in front of your heart, close your eyes and pause. So one of the things that makes yoga different than other types of movement is that there really is this ten intention to be more intentional, to be sensitive, to be mindful, that we're really paying attention to the small details as we move. So taking this moment to think about sensitizing more fully in your body, feel your feet on the floor, make sure the weight feels even on all four corners, feel any excess tension you might be holding in your muscles and try to soften it a little bit. You might micro bend your knees, you might relax your shoulders, you might soften your chin. Now we're gonna take Utkatasana. Utkatasana is either chair pose or lightning bolt pose. They both mean the same thing. You're gonna bend your knees forward, try to keep your pelvis neutral as you squat down as low as you can comfortably can, where your heels are flat and your spine is neutral. So again, we're not going so low that our spine changes shape. Inhale, reach your arms overhead, and you're gonna hold this for just a couple of breaths. So make, do you make sure you're breathing, make sure that you're not holding your breath. Good, inhale, stretch straight, and then we're gonna what we call waterfall down. Bend your knees, hinge at your hips, and pour your upper body forward. Keep your knees bent with your head relaxed down. If it feels good in your body, you can stretch your legs straight. We're stepping back to downward facing dog. Hands are forward, feet are back, your spine's nice and long. Place your knees down and hinge forward. We're in knee plank, kneeling plank position, and we're working to bring the body fairly, in a fairly straight line. So we want to make sure your hips aren't hinging too far back or sinking down. Okay, now we're gonna to try to do a slow lower where we keep the spine in this neutral position. Your elbows bend straight back and you're slowly lowering. Your spine doesn't change shape, just the angle at your shoulders does and elbows. Point your toes, stretch your heart forward, cobra. And then this time we're gonna roll back, lift your hips up and roll to child's pose. Take a nice deep breath there. We're coming to downward facing dog. And now traditional plank where you're on your arms and your feet. If this is too much, at any time you can come to your knees and you'll still be building strength, but it'll be more manageable. And you're trying to keep your body a straight line from your heels, through your hips, through your ribs, through your head. And then we're gonna slow lower like we did before. It's tricky on your feet, so feel free to put your knees down, slow lower. You might hover, that's called chaturanga. Lower down, curl up. Roll back to the child's pose. Take a nice deep breath there. All right, we're gonna come forward now into what's called dolphin. In dolphin, you're gonna interlace your fingers. You unhook your pinkies. You're gonna place your forearms directly under your shoulders, not wider, directly under your shoulders. It's tricky to keep them there. So if it feels effortful, that's normal. Tuck your toes, lift your knees, lift your hips. Hover here, couple breaths. And then lower your knees back down. This time we're gonna come into dolphin again and then we're gonna walk our feet back and hinge our chest forward to find our ideal elbow plank. So as you're ready, lift your knees and hips, and then start to hinge your chest forward and walk your feet back until you're hovering in a straight line. And we're gonna hold this pose for several rounds of breath. And again, you wanna think about not just being able to hold yourself up, 
but to be able to get your spine neutral, feel free to put your knees down to take a little rest at any time. Just another breath or two, and then go ahead and put your knees down and lower down. So that plank in and of itself is a great one to practice just on its own. Um, and over time, build up the amount of time you can hold it. We're not gonna hold any of these too long today because I wanna get through some variety. All right, take your arms back behind you, lift up Shalabhasana, and now we're countering the chest work that we just did, strengthening our mid and upper back here. Stay connected to the rhythm of your breath. And then place your hands, so your elbows are bent, palms near your low ribs, and try to do that straight line push up either on your knees or this time, maybe try to do it on your feet. Tuck your toes under, hug your belly in tight and push up and back to downward dog or child's pose if you like that one better. Take another couple of good full deep breaths. And then we're coming down to our knees and all the way to our bellies. All right, we're gonna work on some side planks and these are really good for your spine. Um, our world has us moving forward and back, really forward a lot, and not so much side to side movement. So side to side muscle toning is really helpful for your back body. All right, so I'm gonna roll over. I am on my left elbow. You are probably on your right elbow, um, but you can position yourself so that you're, you can keep track of which side is which. Um, I think what I will actually do is mirror you. So if you, I'm gonna call this the right elbow. So you're facing me and you're laying on your right elbow, bend your knees, and then you can put your hand on the floor or your hand on your hip, and it's gonna lift and hover. So you're gonna hover here. And if you wanna add to it, you could reach your top arm straight to the ceiling. Take a couple of breaths here. And one thing I want you to really pay attention to is that you keep that bottom shoulder pushing back behind you. We don't want the shoulder to collapse forward. Okay, good, lower down. If you have um, joint issues in your shoulder or your wrist or your hand, you can stay on your forearm. If you don't have those issues, you can put your hand on the ground. So you're gonna put your right hand on the ground. You're gonna try to use your shoulder blade muscles and keep your shoulder blade pressing back. Now you're gonna cross your left leg over and your right leg is under. And again, hand can go to floor to help you or your hand to your hip. And you're gonna lift up and hover hold. Again, you can keep the hand on the hip or you can reach your arm to the ceiling. This pose is called Vashistasana. Vashistasana is a wise sage. And there's some other variations. So you can stay here where your front leg, your top leg is helping to support you. Or if you really want to go for a challenge, you might see if you can balance your legs. Take a couple of good full deep breaths. Okay, if you stack your legs, unstack them, step your top foot forward again, so it's a graceful lowering down, and you can kind of sink your side waist to the floor and you get a nice stretch in your outer hip. If you are a hiker, a walker, runner, those side muscles are probably pretty tight because you don't want to be doing a lot of twisting. So it's good to stretch them. All right, we're gonna just roll around and do the other side. So I'll spin this way. Um, we're gonna do our elbow side plank first. So you've got your left arm underneath you. Your knees are a little bit bent. Your top hand can be on the floor or on your hip and you're just coming up hover hold. So if this is hard, this is where you hang out for some time. This is the more often and the longer that you hold it, the easier over time that it will get. And then as it gets easier to get stronger, you have to progress. You have to do the harder variations. Okay, lower your hips down. You have the option to keep your forearm on the floor or you can come up on your hand. And notice that I have my hand's kind of out at a little bit of an angle there. And then you wanna get your shoulder way back. And then you'll cross your top leg over this top hand can go to the floor or your hip and you're lifting up. And then maybe you're deciding to stay here or maybe you're trying for that extra balance challenge where your legs are stacked and you could keep your top hand on your hip or you can reach it up overhead. We'll hold this one for a few more breaths. So you wanna make sure that your 
As you're working to hold the static posture holds that you're not holding your breath and have a sense of keeping your spine extended long through its serpentine curves. Okay, if you stacked your foot, we're gonna unstack it and let it be a slow lower of the hip to the floor. Okay, good. And then we've worked our chest and arms and front plank. We've worked our sides and side plank and we'll work a little bit of back body strength in bridge pose. So you're gonna come lay on your back your knees are bent and you're going to have your heels lined up with your sitting bones. So they go straight out, not wide, not too narrow. And it doesn't really matter so much where your foot is lengthwise, as long as it's comfortable. You're going to bend your elbows. I just want to backtrack and I want to say we could, we could be specific where the foot goes for specific reasons, but for this video, just whatever feels comfortable. Bend your elbows press your shoulders back, and then you're gonna lift your hips up. Now, we're gonna isometrically squeeze our core support muscles. So you're, you do have a little butt squeeze, but not so much that your knees flare out. So to make sure your knees don't flare out, squeeze your inner thighs also, and you're trying to match the inner thigh and the outer hip tone. And then you can lift your heart as high as you like, and think about stretching out through your knees. Now press your feet into the floor, and it's an isometric drag. So kind of squeeze your heels closer to your hips until you feel your hamstring muscles working. Take a nice deep breath there, and exhale, lower down. This is constructive rest, where your feet are wide and your knees not coming together. Come there, and just take a little pause moment, a couple of good, full, deep breaths. All right, we're gonna do a little bit more work for the back body. So we did bridge pose for the back. We did Shalabhasana for the back. The next thing that we're gonna do is can be pretty tricky. Um, it requires strength and it requires shoulder flexibility. So if it hurts at all, you shouldn't do it. You can just repeat one of the two, the bridge or the um, Shalabhasana. Shalabhasana, by the way, means locust pose. Okay, this is sometimes called reverse table. Um, its Sanskrit name is Purvottanasana. It means east facing pose. And remind yourself that the sun rises in the east. So the idea is that you would do this pose with your heart to the sky as the sun rises as a way to invigorate your inner light. Okay, so we're sitting. Our elbows are bent. Our fingers point towards our hips. It's important that you get your shoulders back. So you want to squeeze your shoulders back and then you'll lift your hips and you're going to hover and hold here. This is challenging in a few ways and one of those ways is the neck. So if it hurts your neck, that's another reason to do one of the other two. You're going to squeeze your butt and think about lifting your butt nice and high. Press into your arms, squeeze your shoulder blades back and together and then lower your hips. The next version is much more challenging and significantly harder. Your legs go straight. So you can just repeat the one we just did if this doesn't feel good. Legs are straight and then you're going to lift up, point your toes down, squeeze your shoulders back and float your heart to the sky. Feel your body getting stronger. Feel that it is challenging to get stronger, but that is the way to do it. Take another breath and exhale, lower your hips down. Okay, good job. That is it for the strength work. We're just gonna stretch out a little bit in a nice relaxing way. So come lay down on your back. Stretch your arms out super wide to the sides. Wrap them across your body. Look your elbows cross. Squeeze your shoulders with your hands if you can. If it feels good in your body, you can lift your head and shoulders up and just kind of rock and roll a little bit. And then lay back down, stretch your arms wide and rewrap the other elbow on top, lift and curl, and then lay back down, relax your arms. Just take a breath, and then we're gonna cross the left knee over the right knee. Your arms are wide out to a T, and you're gonna drop your knees over to the right. You can look up at the ceiling, or you can turn your head to the left if that feels good for you. 
Take a nice deep heart breath here. And then roll all the way onto your right side and you're gonna unwind your legs, reach down with your left hand or a strap for your ankle and point your knee away from your navel. So you're just getting a nice, easy quad stretch there. Take a good, full, deep heart breath. We did stretch our hamstrings when we did downward dog. We're stretching our quadriceps here. And then we're gonna stretch our outer, or sorry, your inner thigh by taking the leg up to the sky. You can point and flex your foot, circle your ankle. And you might've felt a little hip stretch when we did the cross-legged twist. We're gonna do another outer hip stretch here next. So it's a nice, simple, easy one. Bend your knees forward, your hands behind your head, and then start to lay your head back and turn your heart chest to the sky. Again, if you want to, you can stretch your arms wide out to a T. Take a good deep breath. And then bring your knees back up to the center. We're taking that series on the other side, so you're crossing your right knee over your left and dropping your legs to the left. If it feels good for you, look over your right shoulder. Deep, deep heart breath here. And then you're rolling all the way onto your side and bending the right leg back. Hold on to your foot, ankle, pant leg, or strap. Try not to let your lower back arch too much. Keep a little bit of that belly tone so your low back stays nice and long. Bring your knee to your chest, take your leg to the sky, point and flex your ankle, circle it, wiggle your toes. And lower both legs down, stack your knees, stretch your spine long and turn your heart chest open to the sky. Take a good, full, deep breath there. And then roll back onto your back. And you can either take constructive rest like we did earlier, where feet are wide and knees knocking together. But if it feels okay for you, come to resting butterfly. Your soles of your feet together, your knees drop out to the sides, let your arms Relax at your sides. Deepen your breath. And we'll just take a few minutes to practice relaxing. So if it feels great, you could keep your legs in butterfly. I'm ready to move them. And so you can do that too whenever you're ready. Just extend one leg fully straight. And then the other, your feet a comfortable distance apart. And then just let your ankles drop open naturally. And feel free to just fidget around a little bit until you feel like you've found the most comfortable position where you're laying flat on your back. Sometimes if we have significant back injuries, laying flat on your back will never feel good. So you could do constructive rest instead. We're just gonna take about one minute of quiet now. So if your mind wanders, see if you can just keep your breath focusing or your mind rather focusing on your breath and the practice of relaxing tension out of your body. You might feel new energy coming in with your inhalation and then the old energy softening down and out with your exhalation. Notice what happened in the field of your mind. Remind yourself what's important and of value for you today. Have a sense that you can align your thought to support that which is meaningful in your heart. Bring some gentle movement back to your body now. Wiggle your fingers, circle your wrists, move your toes and ankles. Give your knees a nice 
hug into your chest. If it feels okay in your body, lift your head and shoulders up off the floor. Squeeze. And then gently roll over to resting fetal position on your side for a moment. Maybe taking a moment to set an intention or offer a little prayer there. And then use the strength of your arms to press yourself back up to sitting. Try to pull your spine nice and tall. Let your shoulders move back so your heart is open. Bring our hands together in front of our hearts and we'll finish there today. Hope you all have a great day and a good week.